Hello, this is Captain Steve Tarrant from Maine Maritime Academy with a stability lecture. In this uh, lecture, we're going to be investigating how we can use the theory of moments uh, to calculate kg, and also we're also going to look at the shift of g formula as well. So, center of gravity, by the way, <clears throat> uh, is really in three dimensions. There's the vertical center of gravity, okay? There's the longitudinal, so this is looking, uh, you know, side to side here. Well, actually, vertically from the stern. There's the longitudinal fore and aft center of gravity, and that center of gravity also has a transverse component. So there's a vertical component, a longitudinal component, and a transverse component. We're going to be discussing in this lecture the vertical component. So a ship is, in a way, it's like a seesaw. You know, you think about a seesaw. You have your fulcrum, and if you have 100 pounds that are 10 pounds to the right of that fulcrum, and you put 100 pounds, you know, 10 feet to the left of the fulcrum, you're going to be at equilibrium. Um, and, uh, you know, you're measuring your distances from this point. Well, uh, imagine, though, if we put that on a vertical axis, that would be a little bit more like a ship. So you can kind of think of this, this is the center line, but instead of referencing from this fulcrum, for a lot of our calculations on the ship, we're actually going to reference from the keel. And this G, we're going to call the center of gravity. And if it's a center of gravity, really what it means is that half of the, that the weights above are the same as the weights below, because it's in the center, okay? And really, whatever the moments are or the weights above are the same as the weights below. That's what makes it the center. All right, and we are going to use the keel, the level of the keel as a reference to make lots of measurements. So for instance, this is called kg. All right, that's the height of the center of gravity of the vessel at this moment. Now the thing is, is that if we have a kg that's, you know, here, and then we add weights, or we subtract weights, or we shift weights, we can keep track of all that, and we can determine using the theory of moments, or the shift of G formula, how that's going to impact our center of gravity, where it's going to move. And that is going to be a fundamental uh, thing we'll be calculating for stability. The theory of moments says that kg, or the distance from the keel to the center of gravity, is equal to the total moments divided by the total weights. So, let's just review. Okay, what's a moment? Well, uh, for the, in this instance, a moment is going to be a weight tons times a distance. In this case, it'll be the distance from the keel to the center of gravity of whatever we're talking about, whether it's the whole ship or an individual cargo. So if we want to calculate kg, we can take the total moments divided by the total weights. Another way of saying that would be, well, let's say I have a weight. Okay, we can call it weight 1. And that weight is a certain distance from the keel. That's distance one. That makes a moment. And let's say we have a second weight. Okay, weight two. It's a certain distance from the keel. That is a new, another moment. And if you're on a container ship, you could have thousands of containers. You'd have to calculate the weight of each one of those. And if we summed all the moments and we divided all those moments by all those individual weights, including the light ship, well, we could calculate kg. So here is something that looks a little bit more similar to what you would actually do if you were doing it manually. And by the way, this is what the stability program is doing as well. You're taking all the individual weights, the light ship, the fuel, the ballast, water, stores, cargo, okay? By the way, all this stuff collectively is, is the dead weight, all right? Uh, and we take the weight times the distance, the distance from the keel, we get the moment, we sum all those weights, we sum all those moments, and if we take those moments divided by weights, we're going to get the center of gravity for that ship. Again, if you're on a bulk container, you might just have, you know, a few weights, okay, uh, to deal with, because your your holds, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, might be full, but if you're on a container ship, well, you know, you could have thousands of different weights that you have to calculate. So this is an example of a problem solved using the theory of moments. You have a light ship. Let's say it's 10,000 tons. The center of gravity of light, that light ship is 20 feet above the keel. Well, 
10,000 tons times 20 feet gives us a moment of 20,000 foot tons, okay? Feet, tons. So that's the units here. Now, that's the light ship. Now we're going to throw on 300 pounds of, uh, 300 tons of fuel. And this is a tricky little way this is written here. Threw this in because this is how this Coast Guard sometimes uh, will present the information. You know, they're actually trying to uh, distract you and confuse you a little bit so that they can weed out the people that really know what's going on from the people that are a little bit confused. Okay. So uh, how are we going to deal with this? Well, uh, if everything is referenced from the keel, this formula, everything is referenced from the keel, well, if this center of gravity is 15 below, 15 feet below this one, then it's 20 minus 15 or 5. Uh, now, if we add 50 tons of ballast, da da da, bada bang, there it is. And if we load some fuel or cargo, 100,000 uh, tons, 10 feet. So there's our total moments, there's our total weights. The theory of moments says take the total moments divided by the total weights. See foot tons, tons, tons cancel out. All you're left with are feet, 18.6. So this vessel under this con load condition would have a kg of 18.6 if all this information was accurate. Let's look at another example. It's very similar except we're going to discharge that cargo. All right, so there we go. The first three lines are the same. This one is the different one, though. We're, if we discharge, we're subtracting cargo. So we're decreasing the total weight. Well, if I decrease weight, I'm also going to decrease moment. So I have to subtract that from the overall moments. Now I just follow the same formula. And look, kg is now 20.49. Actually, it went up, which makes sense, OK, because I removed weight. All right, um, so. Uh, so that's the theory of moments. And the theory of moments is very useful when you're dealing with multiple weights moving. Okay? We're adding weights, we're subtracting weights. There are multiple weights in motion here. But <clears throat> in some situations, there might just be one weight in motion. All right? Uh, an example might be uh, you finish loading and you're like, you calculate the center of gravity of your vessel and then you're like, oh, oh, we forgot this one container. All right, you load that container on, that's going to shift your G a little bit. Well, you know, one container probably is going to shift your G very much, but uh, let's just say it was a very heavy thing, all right, or you're a small vessel. You might want to uh, calculate how that's going to impact things. Well, you can go back and do the entire theory of moments again, or you can use a simplified version of the theory of moments called shift and G, which we're going to talk about now for a few minutes. So the theory of moments works in all situations, but if you're only moving one weight, there's another quicker method. That's the shift in G, aka GG. It calculates how G moves after a weight is loaded, discharged, shifted, or picked up by the ship's gear. Ship's gear being like the ship's crane, crane, container, okay? If you're using a shore crane, this formula doesn't apply. We'd have to, you know, we'd use the GG or, or the, the, anyway, uh, hold on to that thought. Here's the formula. Shift in G equals weight times distance divided by displacement, um, okay? Uh, so actually, this formula does work if you discharge a weight. Um, the weight in question will be the weight of the individual cargo. The distance, well, we'll see in just a minute. There's a, a few different ways we're going to calculate this, but we're not going to uh, be calculating the difference here between the keel and the weight. We're going to be calculating it from the previous center of gravity and the weights. Okay, That'll become more clear as we go along. And we'll divide by our total displacement at the end. Okay, That's the displacement of the entire ship. All right, after we've loaded, discharged, or shifted. So, in your text, page 58, there's a very good section here that really describes the GG formula. All right, the, the photocopy didn't come out very well, but that's the symbol for displacement. And here defines what W equals, that's the weight of the, you know, that's the weight that are tons added, removed, shifted, or suspended. And D is the four. A, if you're loading or discharging, it's going to be the distance in feet or meters between the center of gravity of the cargo and the center of gravity of the ship. Now, this is a little bit different than the theory of moments. 
in the theory of moments, our reference was the keel. With the GG formula, our reference is going to be the center of gravity at the beginning of the problem. And we're going to measure our distances from that, how far G moves from that position. If you shift cargo, you're going to be going with B here. For shifting cargo, the distance in feet or meters of the shift, all right, and when you're shifting, a lot of times, you know, you're shifting 20 feet up or 5 feet down or whatever, you're just going to use that value. Uh, if you suspend a weight, okay, using a ship's crane, uh, there's a little typo in the book, but you're basically, it's going to be the distance in feet or meters between the suspension, that's the height of the boom, okay, the boom block, okay, and the height of the weight. And the, the dis final displacement of the ship in long tons, that's the displacement after. So if you add weight, you're going to have to take the, the, the displacement of the ship and then add the, the weight of the loaded cargo. If you subtract, if you discharge something, you'll have to take the weight of the ship minus the, display, the, minus the displacement of that one particular cargo or the weight of that one particular cargo. By the way, down here at the bottom, two, three, four, five, these are the rules for how center gravity will shift or move if you add, if you load, discharge, or shift a weight, okay, including suspension. So, what we're going to do now is three examples. And in these three examples, we're going to first do them all by the theory of moments, and then we're going to do them all by the shift of G. And why can we do that? Well, Turns out that the theory of moments works in just about every situation, whether you're using one, moving one weight or multiples. But the shift G formula is actually much simpler to use. All right, but we're going to prove to you that you can do it either way. So, example one: we're going to shift a weight. If we're shifting a weight, we're not loading or discharging; we're just moving it upon somewhere to, from one place of the, on the vessel to another. And when we do that, um, the displacement of the ship does not change. So, our displacement for this example is 10,000 tons. Our kg is 25 feet. You're going to shift 200 tons up 20 feet. Now, in this example, they don't tell you where you're shifting it from, but it really doesn't matter. If I'm going to shift 200 tons up, I'm going to increase the moment by 200 tons times the distance I move it. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's say that uh, this is the ship, okay, there's your keel, and there's your center of gravity at 25 feet. If I take, let's say, 200 tons from here and I slide it up, what's G going to do? It's going to follow that weight, okay? So G started here, but it went to here. So this was the original kg, 25, and the new kg is going to be something greater than 25, okay? So let's do this by the theory of moments. Theory of moment says weight times distance equals a moment. So 10,000 times 25, that's the ship as it, at the beginning of the problem with whatever cargo it had on board. Now, 200 tons, we're shifting. So the moment is going to be 200 tons times 20 feet because it's shifted up 20 feet. We don't know where it started, but we do know that we're adding more moment because it's going up. And it's going to be... 4,000 tons more moment, okay? But since we're not adding or subtracting actual weight, we're not going to, the 10,000 tons of the vessel stays the same. So we're actually, I put this in parentheses because we're actually not going to sum that here because we didn't change the weight of the vessel. We just moved it around. This would be like you taking uh, your wallet out of your pants pocket and putting it in your shirt pocket. If you're standing on a scale when you did that, it wouldn't change your weight. Okay, it would just change the moment on your body exerted by that wallet. All right, so 10,000 tons, 24, 2554. Anyway, two, yes, this is your moment. We're going to divide that by 10,000, and our kg is 25.4. Ah, we predicted that it would go up. How far did it go up? The new kg, kg prime, is 25.4 feet. Do not get confused between this. This is not feet. That's prime. That means the new one. Whereas here, hmm, this means feet. All right? That could be a little confusing. What was our original kg? 25 feet. So how far did the center of gravity shift move? 
0.4 feet up. And here it is. This is GG. GG prime. G was here, moved to here. Okay, it went 0.4 feet and it went up. Okay, hold on to that thought. Let's do another example. And this one, we're going to load. Okay, so if we're loading, well, let's, well, 10,000 tons, kg 25, everything's the same except now we're going to load 200 tons. We're going to come in maybe at a displacement of this with a kg of that. Now we're going to load 200 tons and we're going to load it at a kg of 20 feet. Okay. What does that picture look like? We come in like this. Now suddenly we're going to put 200 tons here. Well, what's G going to do? It's going to move towards the weight. And the center of gravity will decrease. So G is going to go to a new G, G prime, and we should expect it to be less than 25 feet. Let's do the calculation. Weight times distance equals moment. There are moments. 10,000. Hey, that's the same. Now we're adding 200 tons times 20. So the moment is the same. Interesting enough. Okay. But what's going to be different? The weight is different. I came in with 10,000. I threw 200 tons on. Now my displacement is 10,200. 10, but my moment is the same. So when I divide that, I get a kg of 24.9. Ha ha. What was my original kg? 25. So how did it move? Well, we predicted it would go down. It went down 0.1 feet. Hmm, okay, pretty good. You'll notice here that for all of our calculations, we use the keel as the reference, okay? All right, let's do another problem. We shifted a weight where displacement did not change. We loaded a weight where displacement went up. Now we're going to discharge a weight. Displacement is going to go down. So same basic 10,000, da, da you get the whole idea with discharge. Let's do it. All right, well, all right, if I have 10,000 tons, including this 200 tons, and I discharge that, what's G going to do? Hmm. G is going to move away from that weight. G prime will be higher than G, okay? So we're going to use our keel as our reference. 10,000 tons, that was the original kg at 25 feet. That gave a moment of that. Now we're going to discharge 200 tons. We're removing it, so we have to subtract. If we subtract our weight, we subtract our moment. If we add our weight, we add our moment. So, went from 10,000 to 9,800. Went from 250 with some zeros to 246 with some zeros. Now, total moments divided by total weights is going to be my kg. Ah, and we predicted it would go up, 25.1. How far did it go? How far did g move? Well, the original kg was 25. So it went up 0.1. So there's two different ways that we can think about this. We can calculate kg prime, the new kg, and compare it to the old one and see how much it changed. So you can see G to G prime, G to G prime, G to G prime. That's the shift in G. This is KG, but this is GG, the difference between the original G and the new. That is a subtle difference between the theory of moments and what we're going to do next. We're going to do the shift to G formula, which we do only, well, it's most convenient to use when only one weight is moving. When only one weight is moving. Okay, here we came in, we started off with this, and we only moved one weight. Now we did it by the theory of moments, but we could have done it by this, and that's what we're going to do now. So the formula says GG equals weight times distance divided by displacement. All right, so this is that excerpt from page 58. In this problem, we are shifting. Then we're going to load, then we're going to discharge. So if we're shifting, for shifting cargo, the distance in feet or meters of the shift, well, we shifted 20 feet. And we shifted 20 feet up. Okay? So GG equals weight 
Okay, that weight is for the individual thing, 200, times the distance, we moved it 20 feet up, okay? So 200 times 20 divided by 10,000, that's the total displacement of the vessel. GG is 0.4. Hey, look, that's what we calculated earlier using the theory of moments. It's the same value. It wasn't this a lot easier than that? Yeah, okay? So let's do it for the load now. We came in with 10,000 tons. We're adding 200 at a height of 20 feet. Well, what's our weight then? Okay, oh, for loading or discharging, the distance in feet or meters between the center of gravity of the cargo and the center of gravity of the ship. So the distance in feet or meters between the center of gravity of the cargo and the center of gravity of the ship. Okay. Well, let's decipher that. The center of gravity of the ship was 25, and the center of gravity of the cargo is 20. All right, so the distance in feet between those two. Okay, so we're actually not using the keel. We're looking at this distance. Okay, we're no longer using the keel as our reference. We're using the original G as our reference. This is a subtle difference between theory of moments, and shift of G formula. So, now, I added 200 tons, so it's 10,000 plus 200. So, when I do all that, it's going to be 0.1. I had to keep track of the fact that it went down, and look, 0.1 down. Let's do a discharge. Formula is the same. For discharging, the distance in feet or meters between the center of gravity of the cargo and the center of gravity of the ship. Oh. We just did that. 200 times 25 minus 20 divided by 10,000. Now, we added 200 when we loaded. Now, we're subtracting 200. So, it's going to be 0.1 again, but this time, we know it went up. And there it is. So, take-home message. If you are moving only one weight then you can use this sim simplified formula, this shift of G formula. You can also use the, the theory of moments, okay? But you're just kind of doing more work. If only one weight is moving, you can use this. Now, you can actually use this for multiple weights, but it's kind of a pain, okay? If you've got multiple weights, the theory of moments is really the better way to go. All right? The next uh, lesson is going to be uh, the next step of this, which is looking at how you can use this shift in G formula or the GG formula to calculate the shift in G when you suspend a weight with the ship's gear, like a crane or something like that. Stay tuned for that lecture. So this is just a, a one last little eval. When do you use the theory of moments? When do you use shift of G? Theory of moments is really best when you have multiple changes in weights. Shift of G formula is really best when you have one moment, okay, moving, one moment changing. And in reality, the shift of G formula is really the theory of moments just done once, okay? This shift of G is actually a moment formula. This is, but you're just looking at one moment, whereas when we're doing this, we're looking at many moments changing, all right? And the last difference between them is that for the theory of moments, the reference is the keel. But in the shift of gravity formula, the reference is the original center of gravity and how it changes from that to the new center of gravity. And that is the end of that.